down to the floor. But just finding your parallel feet position and just gently rocking forward and back. Just a little rock on the toes and the heel. Now, as you do this, find your, your um, ASI assets, these little bones at the front of the pelvis, and just let your hand fingertips slide in. So you'll feel the softening, you're no longer on the bone. And notice if you rock forward and back, how the deeper abdominal muscles start to engage that. Right, our muscles are there for stabilizing, keeping us in balance, support us with movement, and we want to support them with feeling the jaw without us actually having to think about what do I do actually, what do I do. Now, take it to your spine, spine, and then find those open muscles on either side of the spine, and just drop forward and back there. And ideally, you can feel those muscles activating under your fingertips in equal timing. If we find one side is activating before the other, that's just a sign of a little bit of a balance. Now keep your fingers there, but walk to the front left point. You will feel that right muscle under the right fingertips up. Rocking to the left front Turn on. And then go to the right front. Feel that left one. To a pump plane. So when I'm stepping with my right side, right foot, for example, we've got stability happening on the left side. Now take it back to the center so you're rocking forward equal way. And if before you felt those muscles activate in different timing, like dunk dunk as they come on, do you feel them engaging in equal timing and amounts, or at least in group. Good, and then just relax and shake it up. So just let the knees bounce, let the arms shake, let the hands shake. Take a breath in through your nose, and exhale out the mouth. Inhale through your nose, and exhale out. Now take a breath in, lift your arms up high, Side, not by lifting the shoulders, by lapping your ribs to lift. And then just draw your shoulders naturally down and let the arms Breath in. To upper top, you can lift from the rib cage and then bring the shoulders down and arms down. This time when we exhale, we four pull down, take a breath in, arms come up. And as you exhale, let's be a little bit relaxed, tuck the chin one vertebra at a time, through your tummy, belly towards your spine, and really be aware of the movement in your spine. Let your head hang heavy, say yes with your head, just to help release the back of the neck, and then take a breath in. As you exhale, bend your knees, press into your feet, scoop through your belly, rolling up, head is last, breathe in, arms come up. Exhale, arms come down. Think of each vertebra lifting before it flexes forward. Lifting before it flexes forward. Scoop through the tummy. Soften the knees to whatever degree feels good for you. And as you come down, say yes with the head. Swing your arms forward and back. Legs are as bent as what you need. Take a breath. Exhale, press down into your feet. Packing the pelvis. Knees stacking. Pelvis over feet, ribs over pelvis, over on them. One more time. Breath in. Exhale. Press down like you're looking through water. Each vertebra up and over, up and over, trickling, trickling, trickling. Take your walking down your back slowly. Bring the knees to where it feels good. Take a breath right there. Exhale. Push through your belly. Rolling up, restacking. One more breath in. We'll stay standing here. And then exhale, arms coming down. So you can just let your hands be on your hips or let them rest to the side. You're just going to take a little roll forward, alternating your step. But the focus is on that stretching through the metatarsals and toes of the back leg. So what I want to think of is rather than stepping and then rolling, is rolling into the step. Pardon me, rolling into the step. So when we walk, it's the push off, and the step is what keeps us upright. It stops us from falling. 
So when we're working with proper fitting, your pelvis is staying right underneath you. Think of your pelvis as breathing. You can even put your fingers on your sacrum and think of the fingers as pushing your pelvis forward. Pushing your pelvis forward. So we've got the roll onto the toe and your pelvis leading the way. The step is what allows you to stay upright. And we'll just do four more of those, getting a nice extension through the bottom of the foot, opening through your toes, and one more time, rolling forward and coming back. Now take your feet a little bit wider. Again, whatever feels good for you, and just round and stretch forward. So you're tucking your tail, and then lift up and extend, and bring your arms back down. Round forward, so you're tucking, you're reaching forward, just open across your back. Keep the shoulders down, I think you can shoulder blade broadening, and then lift up, take a big breath in, a little bit of extension if it feels good, and then arms come down. And again, round your back, stretch through that. Lift up, extend, let it feel good. You can let your pelvis go forward just enough to feel a gentle opening through your pelvis. And then back to center. Two more times, round and around. Shoulders draw down, shoulder blades wide. Lift up, open heart center, let your pelvis go forward, tuck in, supporting your own spine. Back to center. One more time, bring it forward, reach, tuck, we'll let it feel good. Arms come up, hips go forward, a little extension, and back all the way to center. Good. Now step your right foot forward, press your left heel down. Keep your toes pointed forward, a little bit of tummy support, a little tightening of your back glute, and just roll up to the toes, and then as your heel comes down, allow the lengthening through the calf. Bring it up, and allow that lengthening through the calf, and lift. Nice, easy breath in, and heel comes down. Bring the arms in, lift, and then pull. Bringing some energy and connection from tip to toe, and breathe in, and then heel comes down. And breathe in, and exhale. Up, and let that length come all the way from the bottom of your heel up to your calf. And then what happens from here is it opens through the calf and it wraps around through the thigh in front of your hip. So we have this beautiful kinetic chain. And then from that opening up the front of the hip here, notice the extension here. So it all connects. And two more up and down. And one more and down. Good. Now step your left foot forward. And now take your right foot back. Both sets of feet, toes pointed straight ahead. You're in just enough of a lunge that you can feel a little bit of tensional pull. You might think of it as a stretch in the calf. And then rise up to the toe and then heel comes down. And then just being present of that connection of the whole kinetic chain from the back heel to your calf that wraps around to the front of your hip and then it comes up into your sternum. And now at the arm. And then bringing the breath into it. And we're moving and breathing in flow together. Beautiful. Breathing in. And exhale. Feel down. And lift. And lift. Inhale. Pull through the arm. And start to feel that activation through the back. And belly at the same time. And one more time, bring it up, and down. Good. Step your right foot forward. Walk to the front of your mat. Now we're going to come down to the floor. It's sitting the way I'm, I'm going to sit. We're just going to be using our legs to sit down. That doesn't feel safe for you. And if you can come down to the floor in any way that feels safe for you. Otherwise, we're going to take your arms forward, take a breath. And you're going to start to lower yourself down and up to your seat. So, get down, get this, get feet. Now, bring the bottom of your feet together, grabbing above your ankles, and use that tension of your hands and your chins to draw your collarbone open. 
draw your shoulder blades together, take a breath, stand up and back. And then bring your hands to your knees, scoop and around. Good. And now open. And come just to the skin. I'm going to use my elbows a little into the inside of my thigh. Connecting to the mid back. Open the bottom to the collarbone. Lift your throat. Just everything is moving together. Your head is like a big vertebra. Go through your spine though. And then switch your hands around. Round your back. Scoop through the belly. Notice the difference. I'm not dropping and collapsing here. Instead, shift from the pelvis, even the belly to the spine, up under the rib. And this just follows. So this is the head to follow the movement of your spine. And we'll go a few more times. Hands to the up above the ankles. Elbows into the thighs. Draw your shoulders down to the back. Open your chest. Ah, let it feel good. Hands to the knees. Keep in touch. Shoulders are always relaxed. Keep up. Back. One more time as we breathe in. Hands, elbows pressed, shoulders down and back. Opening heart center. It's like the activation of the back is, is really connecting into the heart as you open your chest to you get this contraction and that expansion. And then bring the knees in. Take your hands behind your thighs. Again, shoulders relax, easy. And just tap, keeping your eyes forward. Notice the space in your throat. And then bring it up and open your hips. And again, tucking pelvis, scooping through your abdominals. Upper body just follows. Use your arms to assist. So it is morning, sometimes it takes our body a little bit to warm up and get the, the mobility to the joint. So if you're feeling a little tight in the low back, just use your arms to help you. Use your breath to guide the movement. And with the exhale, scoop. Inhale, open and expand. And one more time. Exhale, tuck and scoop. Inhale. So this time we're going to roll all the way down. If rolling down doesn't feel safe for you, roll onto your side and lie on your back. So we're going to tuck again. Arms are there. Arms are there. Nice, easy roll. Bringing your heels towards your feet and separate your the knees and feet a little bit. So they're not together. You're lining your feet up with the uh, center of your hair. Head comes down. You can support your head at this time. You can put the pillow behind your and let your arms come down to your side. Now, I'm going to do a pelvic rock. So as you pull your belly to the bottom, just squeeze your glutes a little tuck, and then release. So it's not a full lift. We want to keep our ribs still, so you can place your hands on your ribs, and keep the ribs still, and just move your pelvis independent of our ribs. So, one of the challenges when people have uh, tension in the low back is that the ribs and the pelvis can become um, locked together in that they move as one. And so part of releasing that is just doing a gentle pelvic rock. Just breathe, exhale, belly to side, and move in a way that feels safe. So never push into pain or stiffness. Just bump up against it, and if you can keep the body relaxed in that way, the range will come. Tension will release in the body as we breathe and we move. And we feel more. Let it feel good. Yeah, allow the low back just to open up and release. And one more time. Come and bring it in. Now bring your knees and ankles together. Open your arms out to a T. And then just roll your lower body over to the left. Allow the right foot to come off the mat. So you're getting more of a lengthening along the side of your body. Take a breath in. Exhale, belly to spine to return. And now inhale over to the other side. So think of the movement coming from your pelvis as opposed to your knee. See how my left foot is off the mat. And again, keeping both shoulder blades down, the amount of range is based on 
keeping your upper body contact with the floor, shoulder blades touching, and now we're just again moving your pelvis and creating that expansion between your ribs and pelvis. And we'll go one more each side with the breath. Feel that reach and length coming from the pelvis. The lower body is just moving as one unit and then over to the other side with breath. And exhale, belly to spine to come all the way back. Now bring the arms down by your side and now lift them, palms face in. Keep shoulder blades down, keep your ribs on the mat and reach your arms overhead. Notice your range, keeping your elbows straight, ribs down, and then circle around. So if you start to bend your elbows here, stop before your elbows bend. So what we're getting is shoulder joint range, and we're getting this nice opening through your lats, through your ribs, as you move and you breathe. So inhale, Get that extension, heavy ribs to the mat. Exhale, circle around. Inhale, breathe, ribs heavy. Exhale, circle around. Just two more, breathing in. Notice we're starting by creating space. Creating space. It's hard to activate a muscle, we'll go one more, when we're tight. So we create the space and then we activate. Bring your arms down. If you have a pillow behind your head, remove the pillow. Bring your heels close to your seat so you can feel your toes planted. And now just a little bit apart so your knees and feet are lined up from the center of your hip. Take a breath in. As you exhale, start with the pelvic tuck. Scoop belly to spine, tighten your glutes. And as you lift your pelvis, keep your ribs heavy and soft and focus more on your knees reaching over your toes. So we're interested in the hip and thigh extension. Think of a magnet pulling your knees inward enough that you can feel your inner thigh and glutes to speak a little bit deeper. Now pause for breath. And as you exhale, shoulders soften. Start to trickle down, think of your sternum heavy. Allow the space in through the low back all the way down and let everything release. Again, as you exhale, start with the tuck. Challenge is to keep your neck relaxed, shoulders soft. So we're really activating the glutes in your inner thigh, hamstring, press into your big toe just enough. Squeeze a little in the inner thigh. You're not pulling your knees together. It's like there's a ball and you're just putting a little pressure onto that ball. Now press your ribs down, heavy. Put your palms flat, push your hands into the mat, and use that to get a little deeper connection in the glute. So glute more hip extension. Front in, and exhale. Lengthen through the back of your neck. Allow your sternum to be heavy, coming down, feeling the mobility coming into your spine, and then everything releases. Allow your low back to in a little deep. Inhale. Exhale. Scoop. Squeeze. And as you lift, press down into your hands. Reach your knees over your toes, but keep the throat open, chest and ribs heavy and soft. Breath in at the top. Collarbone broad. Hands and arms are engaged. Exhale to gently hold back. And yeah. Now extend your right leg out. Bring your left leg up into tabletop. Keep your knee bent. If you find your upper body rocking, you can take your arms to a T or leave them by your side. Moving from your hip, cross over midline and circle the leg around. Your option is you can guide it with your hand. And the next choice is you can actually extend your leg, flex your foot. Tighten your right thigh a little more and circle the whole leg. Inhale for one circle. Exhale for another. And knee. Or it can be a straight leg. Let's just do two more in this direction. Nice and deep inhale for activation and then change direction. So we open. 
So it's just mobilizing in the hip while we stabilize in our pelvis. Bend the knee, hold straight leg. Do what feels good for you. Inhale and exhale. Round. And we'll do two more in this direction. Let's work. And up. Now, bend your left knee. Give that a hug. Reach and extend a little bit up the right side. Take your left hand, open it to your teeth. Right hand is on the left knee. And just take your leg across. Breathe in. And come back to center. And again, take your leg across. Just breathe in. Find that reach coming from the left side. So we're breathing like the both directions. And come back. Two more times. Cross over. Breathe it in. Exhale, come back. And one more time. Inhale. And exhale. Take your left leg, extend it out. Bring your right leg. You have the choice to tabletop or extend it. I like a flex heel because it creates that length all the way through the back leg. Arms can be by your side or to a T. You cross over midline and back to center. The idea is that your body, your torso, isn't rocking a lot. There will be a little bit of give because of the weight of your leg. The movement through the hip does shift the pelvis a little bit, but we want to be as still as we can in the upper body, strong and stable in your core, so we can get the mobility in your hip. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Change direction. So we go out, around and up, and around and up, around and up. Bend the option, around and up, around and up. Good. Just two more. Reach. Play with the options. Play with what feels good. Strength versus strength. Beautiful. Bend the knee, give the leg a hug, open and lengthen through the left hip. Now check always those little shoulders. They like to help, don't they? Left hand on the right knee, take your right arm up to a T. And as you inhale, just allow a nice easy rotation. And back to center. So hopefully as we've been moving and mobilizing our spine since the beginning of class, it's starting to feel warm. It is moving freely and flowingly. If not yet, that's okay. We'll get you there. We got an hour. And across. Come back to center. And just one more time, taking it across. And back to center. Lovely. Bend both knees. Take your hands. Bend your elbows. You're going to interlock your fingers behind your head. Now, what's important here is that we keep our pelvis in neutral. So when we come up into a, a chest lift, often people want to tuck and they start using their glutes to assist. We want to keep your pelvis neutral, pubic bone reaching forward so that the effort is really coming from just under your ribs. Your head is being supported. So as you inhale, just do a gentle chin tuck. Push your head back into your hands as you hover. And then exhale as you lift. Target your eyes and sternum just above your knees. Now pause there. Check. Untuck your pelvis if it's tucked. Gently press your hand into the back of your, your head, into the back of your hands. And you'll notice how your neck lengthens a little bit. And now just from the upper abdomen, lift up just a little bit more and then bring it down. And again, with the breath, think of your upper body moving as one, and you're using your upper abdominals to press your lower ribs down into the mat. Gently press your head into your hands, lengthening through the back of your neck, and bring it down. It's tempting to lift from the arms, pushing into the head. Can you see how that looks different than this? So we're moving from here. 
Check your pelvis, it's neutral. Lift up a little deeper. Check your head pressing into the hands and lower down. Exhale as you lift. Inhale, pause, reset your pelvis. Exhale, a little higher lift. And inhale down. Two more times. Exhale, lift, reset the pelvis, soften the shoulders, head presses into the hands. Exhale, lift a little higher. Really feeling that the emphasis is in the upper abdomen. And down, and one more time. Exhale, lift, reset, check position of upper body. Exhale, just a little higher, angling just above the knee. And then bring it all the way down. Bring your right leg lightly into your hands. We're not pulling it in tight. We're just holding this nice shape. Your left knee is lined up with the hip in a nice straight line. We don't want it drifting off, so check that. And then just lift from the left glute. Keep your big toe gently in pressing into the mat. It helps to target your inner thigh and lower back down. Again, press into your whole foot, including your left big toe, and you're lifting from your glute. And back down. Again, exhale. Opening, beautiful opening through the hip. And down. And one more time. Press into the left big toe, up. And lower back down. Nice. All right, switch legs. So we'll put your right foot down, press into your right big toe. You're holding softly, so I'm not tucking in tight. We're just holding the shape. And here we go. Exhale, we lift. Keep your right big toe active to the mat. And then we come back down. So the stabilizing is your foot and your hip. And the mobilizing is your glutes and your hamstrings because they're responsible for hip extension. And down. And if you catch your right leg rolling out, activate the big toe, the big toe joint, the uh, big toe malleolus, and then your inner heel. And we lift. Keep using your breath to help inspire the movement. And one more to lift up and to bring it down. Good. All right, bring both legs in and then bring your left arm up and roll over onto your left side. Bring your right hand down and we're going to come into a quadruped position. Check that the elbows aren't hyperextending. Just think about the tip of the elbow just pointing to the side walls. And we're in a neutral position. Tops of feet are flat on the mat, and you can actually even press a little bit of the tops of the feet down to help create a little more connection to your core. So head and shoulders down, and or in line, sorry, the shoulders are away from your ears. Take a breath in. As you exhale, start with your tuck. Really go deep, belly to spine, and then last is your head. Check that the shoulders are down, but shoulder blades are broadening. And then as you return, it's from your pelvis, through your mid-back, sternum, and head returns. Going to whatever level of extension feels good for your spine. Tuck your pelvis, scoop through the belly, press into your tops of your feet and your hands, nose and pubic bone, draw towards center. From your pelvis, tailbone points behind you, shoulder blades gently connect down, sternum pulls forward, chin can lift, let it feel good. And again, exhale, scoop. Your head is last in both directions. Nose and belly button pull towards each other. Pelvis starts to return, spine unravels, shoulder blades draw down. Pull your shoulders down, pull your sternum forward. One more time, tuck. Just allow you to find your own flow of breath, but continue with conscious breathing. In through the nose. Choose out nose or out mouth, whatever resonates for you. And 
all the way down. Now, take your knees a little wider, curl your toes under this time. Take your hands just a tiny little bit ahead of the shoulders and provide some traction as if you're trying to pull your hands towards your knees, but they're stuck, feeling the activation of triceps, lats, and core. Now, keep that tension in the arms as you sit back onto your heels. Keep the tension in your arms as they pull you forward. Keep the tension in the arms so your, your hands are stuck, but you're trying to pull them towards your knees. So you're activating upper body and lats. This is one of uh, my client's favorites. If their low back is feeling a little sticky, that will do this exercise. And as they said, we're creating supported space in through the lumbar spine. And bring yourself forward. We'll go one more time with the breath, sitting back. Keep the tension through your arms. And then bring it all the way up. Bring your knees back to parallel. Top to the feet can go flat. Take your right arm towards your temple. Open into rotation. And then tucking under. Let the left elbow bend if you like. Up and open. Breathe in and bring it back. Up and open, breathe it. And tuck it under. And one more time, up and open, breathe in. And tuck it under. Changing sides, right hand goes down, left hand to the temple, nice and stable through the right upper body. Inhale, rotate. Think of your sternum leading the way and that your Arm and elbow is just an extension of the movement in the sternum. So it's not so much about bringing the elbow back, it's turning your torso and wrapping under, turning your torso, let your sternum look towards the wall and then tuck it under. And one more time, let your sternum look towards the wall with the breath and tuck it under. Coming, curling your toes under, walking back, and I'll give you an option, but if you can get your heels down so my feet are wide, I'll just face you for a moment so you see how wide my feet are, and my elbows pushing against my knees. Now, if your hips and knees aren't happy here, I'm gonna invite you to bring yourself up to a stand, take your legs nice and wide, and just open here. So this would be an alternative. So you're still getting that nice hip extension. This would be an alternative to being all the way down at the ground. So you're nice and wide, you've got your upper arm pressing into the inside of your thighs near the knees, collarbone is broad, and just rock side to side. Breathing in and breathing out. This is one that I try and get into throughout the day, just to really keep that mobility and blood flow through my joints. If you're doing it in a standing position here, your back is supported and you're just shifting. Nice. Good. Your back is engaged, core is engaged. Let's just do this for two more breaths. We're working through the talus joint in the seat as well as just really nurturing, like giving a nice internal massage, deep in the hip and the knee. And again, with the breath side to side, beautiful, and back to center. Now place your hands down, walk your feet just a little more parallel, close forward. Keep the hands down, they can be flat or on the fingers, and just let your head drop down. Just extend your legs as much as you can, breathe in. And then bend the knees to where it feels good for you. Maybe you're here. Maybe you're coming all the way down. And again, with the breath, lengthen up. Option, if you are feeling it's a little too deep, bring your pillow or your cushion so that your hands aren't quite so low. And again, to lengthen up. And you're only coming down into a range that suits your body. We never push into pain. We breathe in and breathe out. Sit deep as it feels good. And two more times, inhale 
It follows your spine. And exhale. Nice. And again to inhale. And exhale. Good. Now you're going to come right back down onto your knees again. Right here. Walk your hands forward and just sit back into a shell stretch. Hands are reached forward, so we're getting the extension through the ribs. Head is just resting comfortably between your arms. Breathe into your back and side ribs. And exhale, belly to spine. Again, breathe into the back and side ribs. And exhale, belly to spine. Beautiful. Bend your elbows, come onto your side. Now you can use your cushion or pillow under your head here, or you can take your arm under your head. Tuck your knees up about 45 degree angle at the hip and your knees, and reach this arm forward, and allow your weight to come more onto the side of your thigh versus your hip. So you're tipped slightly forward in your pelvis. Now we want to stack the pelvis, so we rather than be collapsed here, we want to reach your hip away. So your pelvis is stacked, you'll feel a little space under your waist and your heels stay together. So we call it a tilt, a stack and a roll. Now think of this for top knee, reaching forward as you lift, keeping a little bit of that energy forward and then bring it back down. Check your stack, check your roll, and then reach your top knee forward as it lifts. The range isn't as big as often we think it needs to be here. We just want to target your external hip rotators. And so the key is if we make it too big, we start to roll back. So by keeping the arm reaching forward, keeping the weight more on the thigh than the hip, and then extend the knee forward as you lift. Your belly pulls in, you can get that connection right at the top of the hip, side to side. And we exhale, lift. And every time before you lift the leg, check your position. Are you still stacked? Are you reached forward? Tip the knee forward and lift. Beautiful. And back down. And again, to lift, reach the knee forward. Notice my feet are staying together, but they're light. I'm not pushing my bottom leg into the mat. I'm keeping it light, just resting the leg on the mat. And then again, nice. And we bring it up. And then keep your breath flowing. Typically, I cue exhale on effort. But some people feel more stable when they inhale, and that is totally fine. And down, breathing with the movement. Up and down. Now, take this leg in front, extend the bottom leg out. Flex your foot, push out your heel, and now we're focusing inner thigh lift. Up and down. You know, I find it's just as important to work the internal hip, the inner thigh, as it is the outer thigh. Both work together to create stability for your hip and your knee and your ankle. Push out your heel, lifting from your inner thigh up. Nice. Reach your heel away. So we're always keeping length as we lift. And now hold your leg up, keep pushing out your heel, and little pulse, little pulse. Tummy is engaged. Movement always comes from stability. So focusing more on what's staying still and your alignment, and notice how it gives more strength and ease to the motion itself. So when someone comes in and says, I want more mobility, I always look for stability. So usually if there's a mobility issue, there is a stability issue. All right, I'm starting to equip. So we'll just go for three and two and one and bring it down. Nice. So we're going to come onto our stomach. Hands are under the shoulder, under your shoulders. And just 
Keep your core engaged. Put yourself up into a kneeling plank. Toes can be tucked or flat. Belly towards your spine. Eyes are slightly lifted. And you're going to bend your elbows and extend, but go down only as far as you can maintain a straight line from your tailbone to your head. So if when you go, you're dropping your head, you're better to make the range of motion in the arms smaller so that your chest would touch the floor before your nose. And up. Good. Belly to spine. Nice and stable through your torso. That's it. Just three more. And push. The range is 100% up to you feeling strong in your body. And one more time. And down and up. Nice. We always got to sneak a few of those in. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to turn. So put my head the other way so that I'm facing you. And you can use your pillow. You're welcome to have your back to me and follow my cues. We want to be at about a 45 degree angle at the hip and knee. Top arm is reaching forward. So we want to roll forward. So we're more weighted on the side of thigh than the hip. Stack your pelvis where the top hip is in line with the bottom hip. You'll feel the space under your waist. Do you want to maintain that? Reach this arm forward. We've got our roll and our stack. And now as you exhale, reach the top knee forward as it lifts and nothing else moves. Everything else stays still. Nice. And again, reach your knee forward as it lifts and bring it back. So here, if we're focusing on what's staying still, we're thinking about a nice stable pelvis. You'll know if you feel your weight shift back onto the hip or the pelvis. Keep it on the side of your thumb. Nice. Feet stay light. Bottom leg is light on the mat. There's a tendency to want to push down into the mat to create leverage. Excellent. Check your position each time that you're still stacked and rolled. And then reach your top knee forward as you lift. Feel that little squeeze before you come back down. Relish in the side hip activation. Right? Strengthening our hips is so important. We say if you have a bad back, work your hips. You got bad hips, work your hips. Knees, work your hips. Ankles, work your hips. If you've ever sprained an ankle, you're always given hip stability exercise because it's number one in that kinetic chain down. And lift and lower. Always check your alignment. Reach the knee forward and lift. Feel that little squeeze pause. Hold and down. Let's just do a few more times. You know, these muscles don't take a long time to activate. So, um, you know, it's, it's quick and easy to get in there and, and just make sure they're all awake and doing their job before you head out for a run or a walk or a bike or a ski. One more for good measure, because that's what we do as Pilates teachers, is always more than we say. All right, so bring your top leg in front, extend your bottom leg out. This arm really doesn't need to be there anymore unless it's happy. Flex your foot, push out your heel, and lift. Good, and lift. You can bring your arm by your side, whatever feels good for you. Reach out your heel. So it's that sense of reaching your leg across the room as it lifts. Reach your leg long as it lifts. So your quad is engaged, your foot is flexed. Get that energy all the way down your leg, out your heel. And exhale up, inhale down nice. So notice everything in your body is still. We want stability through the pelvis, but we're relaxed in the upper body. We're not holding any unnecessary tension. We're not clenching our jaw, squeezing our shoulders. Let all that go. Exhale, belly to spine and lift. And lift. All right, let's head into our pulses now. So we do little pulses up, up, and up, and up. Good. Finding that length as you lift. And we're working these deep little stabilizers. When they start to fatigue, they get a little quivery. So embrace the quiver. Know you're doing a great job. 
And we'll go four more, three more, two, and one. Nice. And then bring it down. So rolling over onto your stomach. Tops of the feet are flat. Bring your hands right by your shoulders and slide them down so that you feel a little squeeze in the back of the armpit. Your head is in line with your spine, so it's just slightly hovered off the mat. Keep your belly tight. Keep your legs long on the mat. Lift your eyes. Lift your sternum. Keep your core engaged, so it's shoulder blades draw down. It's just thoracic extension and then come back down. We're gonna be progressing this one into more extension, but be um, just mindful of what you are safe and feel good ranges for you. So this is the first one, is that we're simply lifting the eyes, drawing the shoulder blades down as your sternum takes a peek forward, no change in the lumbar spine, hips, or thighs. The next progression is that we start the same way but you can start to push into your hand. So you can come up a little higher, and then as it feels good, you can come all the way up. Shoulders draw down and back. Come from a place of stability. Bend your elbows, forearms come down, ribs and sternum. So don't go all the way up if it doesn't feel good. That's the rule, it's gotta feel good. So first phase, shoulder blades down and back. Eyes, sternum, you may stop here. Deepen your core. Feel free to open your legs if your back feels tense. Press up, look up. Shoulders draw down and back. Hold your elbows down. Keep your core engaged. Activation through the mid back and all the way down. Eyes lift, inhale. Press into the arms. Little tricep press up. Elbows fold down. Shoulder blades strong, and one more time. Eyes, throat, sternum. Use the activation of the back and belly to support you. Elbows come down, all the way through, and hands come back, push up, and into a shell stretch. Always nice just to flex the spine after extension, just in case you feel any compression through the back. And take a breath in and exhale. Now, curl your toes under, take your knees and feet apart, almost as wide as the mat. Press up and then press your heels down, coming into a downward dog. Again, shoulder blades draw down, so we're using the strength of the back versus tension in the neck and the shoulders. Tuck the knees, bend down, and just lightly tap. Press the heels down. Press the shoulders back, let it feel good. Take a breath, up onto the toes, knees bend. You're not weight bearing on the knees, it's just a kick, little tap. And then heels down, shoulder blades draw down. Let this beautiful extension come into the shoulders, back of the legs, up onto the toes, lower the knees for a kick. And one more time, up onto the heels, press back through the shoulders. Take a loving breath into your body, nurturing your body. And exhale. Up onto the toes. Now we come onto the knees and we come to a seated position. Beautiful. Awesome. Looking good, everyone. Okay, so we're in a mermaid stance. If your hips are tight and you're sitting like this, you can grab your cushion and prop your hip up of the leg that's in front, and that will make it more comfortable. Your other option is you can just sit cross-legged, sitting on your cushion as well. So comfort is important because if you're not comfortable, all you can think of is, I'm not comfortable. So making sure you're comfortable, that you can be in nice alignment through the torso would be your priority. Nice and light on this arm. So as it comes, as this arm comes up and over, keep this soft and easy. Keep that bottom shoulder down and then bring it up. And again, up and over, easy here. 
Use your torso to support the weight of your upper body. And again, inhale up. And exhale to return. And one more time, up and over. Let your head follow your spine. Notice my head isn't here. It's going where my spine goes. And come up. Now, take your arms out and spiral around to the other side. Lightly place your hand there so you can lift tall. A little rotation. And then come back to center. Place your right hand on the mat and reach your arm up and press your hips forward. Look down to your right arm. And then bring it down. Let's do that again. Come up, push this hip forward, extend, let your head, eyes look down. And bring it back down. And one more time with the breath. Inhale up. And exhale, sit. All right, switch your legs and switch. Good. So if you feel you're a little awkward there, it feels uncomfortable, get that cushion under your left hip or up the leg that's forward. Keep this arm soft. Take a breath in. As you go over, let this be easy. Nice. And again, inhale. And exhale. Inhale, opening, finding space. And wherever there's space, there's going to be stability. So we have mobility and stability always working together. A stretch is always active. And one more time, over. And good. Now we're going to rotate. Sit tall through your spine. Shoulders down and back. I'm using this hand just a little bit to help you twist. Breathe into that space, into the lift of your spine, and come back to center. Place your left hand on the mat, right hand up. As you lift, open your hips. Big good morning stretch. And bring it back down. And again, inhale. If you feel like exhaling as you lift, is perfect. Breathing with your movement to find the flow is all we're after. Lift, open the hips, let it feel good. And bring it back down. And one last time. Breath in to come up and over. And exhale all the way down. Good. Now, keep your hands behind you and simply switch your hips. You're leaning back a little bit and we switch. A little bit of more mobility in your hips. And switch. And switch. Beautiful. Switch and switch. If you're feeling a little tight in the hips, take your feet further apart. The wider your feet, the more range you'll have available. Let's do one more each side. Reach this knee down and reach the knee down. All right. And bring it back to center. Okay, turning sideways. We are going to be coming up to a standing position. So again, if coming into that deep knee bend squat isn't comfortable, just roll onto your side and stand up that way. Otherwise, take your feet about as wide as the mat, use your arms to bring you forward, and one more time, press your knees into your hands, draw the shoulders down, feel that connection into your mid-back. Take a breath in, and exhale. And again, inhale and exhale. Place your hands down, straighten your toes forward, come into a little bit more of a hamstring stretch, head heavy. Take a breath, bend your knees, exhale, scoop through your belly, slowly, slowly, head will be left, rolling up and release down. Take a big breath in, arms lift. Exhale, arms press down. And one more time, breathe in, lift. And exhale, welcoming our day. Hands come together, heart center. Feel your feet connected to the ground. Feel that lift of your spine. I call it ground center line. 
Breathe in from above your head into your belly. Exhale, down your legs, out your feet into the earth. Breathe in up from the earth into your belly. And exhale out through the top of your head. Thank you so much for joining me today. I will move forward. I will stop the record button. And if you do have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Otherwise, namaste. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Have a beautiful day.